Uh, Senator, the Senate is moving to protect gay marriage in the Respect for Marriage Act. Why now? Well, we've had to do it because of the Dobbs decision um, that overturned Roe v. Wade. And what happened with that decision was people thought that was about abortion, but it really wasn't. It was a decision that said Americans do not have the privacy rights to bodily autonomy. Therefore, the right to abortion fails and Roe v. Wade fails. But in that decision, the justices, um, the majority opinion written by Clarence Thomas said that um, uh, because Roe v. Wade fell, uh, the decision bears looking at the right to gay marriage and the right to contraception as two other privacy rights that Americans may not have access to. So what we're doing is we're codifying, making sure that should someone come after the right to equal marriage, uh, that it's protected um, legislatively in that. And, and so we're doing that here, uh, but we need to also do the same thing for women to have access to reproductive choice and also for the right to contraception as well. The Respect for Marriage Act would guarantee federal recognition of any marriage if the union was valid in the state where it was performed. But for people watching this and wondering what would happen in the future, what, what protection would this action provide if a state, say Missouri, for example, were to someday in the future try and ban gay marriage? Yeah, I mean, it, it would be it would be a, a real issue. Um, uh, this bill is not ideally what we want to make how I would normally have wanted it to pass. I would want stronger language in there. But remember that this is about getting a bill that can pass. And um, uh, we, we have a bipartisan agreement on this. We have over the 60 votes needed. And uh, so I think this is a good first step forward. Um, I mean, frankly, with a small group of far right justices, signaling their openness to taking away the right and after right for millions of Americans. I think that this historic legislation um, that has brought bipartisan support will move you know, our nation closer to protecting marriage equality for all in all states. Uh, one last question on this topic before we move on, and there's a lot to get to here, but uh, individuals or groups uh, would not be legally required to provide services for a wedding ceremony or for a celebration if it was against their religious beliefs. Perhaps that was language added to secure some Republican support. Do you see that as, as fundamentally important to this bill to allow those people who may object on personal or religious grounds their religious liberty, as they've called it, to, to make their own choice if they want to participate or the, the procedure or the ceremony of gay marriage or not? It was important to have that in here. That was one of the concessions we had to have in there in order to get the 60 votes, yes. Interesting. Uh, we, this is our first time speaking with you, your re-election victory. Uh, yeah. One of the most widely supported politicians in the statewide ballot in Illinois uh, an, uh, by a wide margin there in November. What would a second six years look like? What are the things on top of your agenda? Well, it all revolves around making life easier for working families across Illinois. And that means uh, de developing more good paying jobs across the state and bringing down costs. Um, I think Illinois is uniquely positioned uh, to lead the country and the world on in the green economy. Remember that we created 100,000 new jobs in wind power. Uh, we have we are on the cutting edge of um, clean coal and carbon capture sequestration technology. We have two national labs when it comes to nuclear uh, technology, developing a cleaner nuclear uh, future. Um, we have, of course, the largest producer of ethanol and other biofuels, especially in the realm of aviation biofuels. I think that we have the opportunity to attract foreign direct investment into this country and directly into Illinois, um, like we have with um, uh, companies already coming to places like Decatur. You have LG Industries. Uh, you know They make refrigerators and dishwashers that you may have in your own home. Or well, they're in Illinois, we're partnering with ABM because they can get carbon neutral energy sources to develop uh, bioplastics. Um, I would love to do the same thing for chip manufacturing. And I think by bringing that into Illinois, attracting those investments. We're gonna create good paying jobs, but we're also going to be able to sell that technology to the rest of the world um, and, uh, and really help make you know, lives easier for people across the state. All right, and I know we're running out of time. Just real quickly before we let you go, uh, that we've seen reports that uh, perhaps the Democratic Party is not going to grant Illinois uh, that status as an early primary voting state in 2024. Do, do you consider that uh, a, a dead issue? Do you hope to revive those talks? Is there any chance at all of Illinois being in the mix still? 
I mean, I think that those talks are still ongoing that Illinois would obviously be in the mix. We certainly represent the rest of the country very well in terms of demographics. I will tell you though, that my focus really is on getting the Democratic National Convention to Illinois um, and, and where we're bidding for that. And I'm working hard on that effort. It's my pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me. And since then, the New York Times has now reported that early voting uh, could go to Michigan, not to Illinois. Senator Duckworth there saying that perhaps Illinois still has a fighting shot at bringing the Democratic National Convention to the land of Lincoln in 2024.